The Vala Melkor whom Sauron served was defeated after the War of Wrath and cast into the void, never to return to Middle-earth. Thousands of years later, temples were built in Numenor under Sauron's influence, dedicated to Melkor. What was Sauron's goal in doing this? Was he trying to bring Melkor back? And even if he wanted to, did he have the power to achieve it? Hello everyone, and welcome to Middle-earth Tales. Today, we will seek answers to the questions of whether Sauron had the desire or the power to bring Melkor back. The consequences of the War of Wrath were catastrophic for Melkor. His mistaken belief that the Valar had turned their backs on Middle-earth and no longer cared about its fate ultimately led to his downfall. In truth, the Valar still deeply cared for Middle-earth's destiny. After the most intense and devastating war the world had ever witnessed, Melkor's hands were severed, he was chained, and he was cast into the timeless void beyond the door of night, forever banished from the world. The door of night and the gates of morning were two colossal gates located in the western and eastern edges of the world, marking the boundary between the world and the enveloping void. The door of night lay in the west, while the gates of morning stood in the east. Their placement offers clues to their purpose, as these gates were created during the end of the Age of the Trees, when the Valar brought forth the sun and moon. On one side of these gates lay the physical world, while on the other was the void. Each morning, the sun would pass through the gates of morning, entering the world from the void, and each evening, it would exit through the door of night to return to the void. During the sun's absence, the moon would follow a similar path to bring its light to the world. However, unlike the sun, the moon's movements were less predictable due to its fascination with the sun, often attempting to draw closer to it. Naturally, if these were gates, they had to be positioned upon something. These two gates were set within the walls of the world, an invisible barrier that separated the void from the physical world. So getting to the void was no easy task. But now let's go back to the First Age and the fate of Melkor. Because it's important for us to understand whether Sauron can bring him back or not. When Melkor was defeated, he was cast out through the door of night and imprisoned in the void. The gate itself was placed under the vigilant watch of Arendil, who patrolled it aboard his flying ship Vingalot, under the ultimate authority of the Valar. The gates were, therefore, heavily guarded. Melkor was chained and likely stripped of much of his power. Still, after being cast into the void, we have no concrete information about his condition. As I've mentioned in another video, Tolkien considered bringing Melkor back during the final cataclysm at the end of time, but he left this idea largely undeveloped. After Melkor was gone, time passed, and in the Second Age, Sauron, Melkor's right hand rose to power once again. Unlike Melkor, Sauron did not desire to destroy or corrupt all the beauty in the world. His sole ambition was to become the absolute ruler of the world and all its peoples. If the beauty of the world could persist under his rule, he had no problem with that. However, anything or anyone that stood in his way, whether beautiful or wretched, would face annihilation without hesitation. During this time, another power rose alongside Sauron, Numenor. It didn't take long for these two forces to clash, yet, when confronted by Numenor, Sauron realized he could not overcome its might through war alone. While Sauron's ultimate goal differed from Melkor's, he was just as adept at employing his master's methods. Much like Melkor pretended to return to goodness and struck a blow to Valinor from within, Sauron chose a similar path. Recognizing that Numenor could not be conquered by brute force, he resolved to corrupt and weaken it from within, ensuring its fall without a single battle. As you all know, Sauron, who was taken to Numenor as a prisoner, quickly rose to prominence, becoming an influential advisor to the king. 
During this rapid ascent, he discerned that despite all their might, the Numenorians were tormented by the inescapable reality of their mortality. This unease had festered into resentment and even hatred toward the immortal elves and the Valar. This was the crack that Sauron would use to destroy Numenor. From that point onward, things became increasingly dark and savage for the island kingdom. Sauron manipulated the Numenorians with cunning deceit. He told them that the Valar had deceived them, inventing the figure of Eru to trick them into submission. According to him, the so-called creator was nothing more than a tool to shackle them as slaves. He claimed that only one being could deliver them from these chains, Melkor, whom he exalted as the Lord of all and the giver of freedom. Sauron persuaded them that embracing Melkor and the darkness was their only path to true liberation. Many Numenorians, including their ruler ar Farazon, fell for his poisonous words. Under his direction, a massive temple was constructed. Its base was filled with dungeons and torture chambers, while its roof was crowned by a gleaming silver dome. In the temple's first ceremony, the sacred Nimloth tree, one of Numenor's most cherished symbols, was burned to ash. Soon after, human sacrifices began. The rituals were relentless, with one ending only for another to begin. It is said that the constant smoke from these rites blackened the silver dome, turning it pitch dark. Amid this horrifying descent, warnings were sent to Numenor. Thunderous storms carried dark clouds shaped like great eagles, and lightning tore across the skies. But Sauron twisted even these omens to serve his purpose. During a tempest, he ascended to the temple's roof as lightning struck the dome, collapsing parts of it. Yet, Sauron emerged unscathed, using this spectacle to convince the Numenorians of his divine power. From that moment on, many began to revere him as a god. So, what was Sauron's true intention behind building temples in Numenor dedicated to Melkor and proclaiming him as the Lord of all? Did Sauron genuinely want to bring Melkor back? And if so, was he even capable of such a feat? Let's start with the second question. Could Sauron bring Melkor back? To achieve this, he would have had to breach the Door of Night, guarded by Arendil and overseen by the Valar, enter the Void to find Melkor, and then return the same way. While Sauron was among the mightiest of the Maiar, he did not possess the power necessary to accomplish such a feat. Even the Valar, despite their immense strength, had limits to what they could do and some acts could only be performed once. For example, Yavanna was unable to create another great tree, and the creation of the sun and moon was a one-time event even for them. Their power, while vast, was not boundless, and they operated within certain restrictions. It is therefore reasonable to assume that as a Maya, Sauron's abilities were far more limited in comparison. Moreover, Although Sauron incited Numenor against the Valinor and claimed that they were liars, he knew that the wrath of the Valinor was real and always feared them. In the Second Age, he remained in hiding until around the year 1000, convincing himself that the Valar were no longer paying attention to Middle-earth. He only emerged when he felt certain of this. Thus, even if Sauron had possessed the power, which he didn't, the notion that he would risk the wrath of the Valar by attempting to retrieve Melkor from the Void seems highly doubtful. Fear of their retribution would have been enough to deter him from such a bold and reckless act. So, even if Sauron had the power to bring Melkor back, would he have done it? This brings us to the first part of the question. It is highly unlikely that Sauron had any desire to resurrect Melkor. The reason Sauron originally joined Melkor's cause was that Melkor was unrestrained in using his power. Sauron couldn't comprehend how the Valar, despite their immense might, could leave the world to the stewardship of men and elves. Thus, even though he didn't fully align with Melkor's ultimate goals, 
he chose to stand by his side because Melkor acted decisively. Melkor was not a force that Sauron could overthrow and replace. The only way forward was to serve him. However, once Melkor was removed from the equation, there was nothing left to stop him from pursuing his own path. His allegiance was never rooted in devotion to Melkor's cause, but rather in the fact that Melkor's actions were more closely aligned with his own ambitions. With Melkor out of the picture, bringing him back would serve no purpose for Sauron. On the contrary, Melkor's return would obstruct his desire to rule the world and all within it. In short, Sauron neither had the power to bring Melkor back, nor did he have any need or desire to do so. However, Sauron did need a narrative, a symbol to manipulate the Numenorians and turn them against the Valar. This could not be himself, as he had been brought to the island as a defeated prisoner. Instead, Sauron crafted the narrative of Melkor as a wronged and oppressed figure, unjustly cast into the void by the Valar. Melkor became the centerpiece of this myth, which resonated deeply with the Numenorians, save for the faithful. He exploited the cracks he found in Numenorean society and widened them with this tale, ultimately leading to the kingdom's downfall. In essence, the temples built in Melkor's name were not expressions of Sauron's loyalty, but tools in his strategy to achieve his goals. This strategy proved so effective that it resulted in outcomes likely beyond even Sauron's expectations, such as the complete destruction of Numenor and the loss of his physical form. Of course, this was a small price to pay for his success. Even so, his triumph wasn't absolute, as there were those who survived the destruction, but their story is one for another time. That's it for today. As I often remind you, the ideas I share are based on my own interpretations. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well, so please don't hesitate to share them in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give it a like. Until we meet again, take care and stay well.